All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 18th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2022, Tuesday. Yeah, I, if you've been following me, I've been bringing up some issues with the Nazarenes, the Church of the Nazarene, which I have been attending a small one for about a year with my wife, and I've been growing increasingly uncomfortable. Uh, with some things I've been hearing... Uh, and other things I haven't been hearing, like the gospel of Christ and Christ crucified, hearing that uh, that Christ came into the world to save, to, uh, excuse me, not to save, to serve us. So God Almighty came to serve us. The Creator came into the world, took on human flesh in order to serve humanity, sinful humanity. Hmm. That's a different gospel. I know what gospel that is. I've heard it before. Uh, anyway, I was able to query the pastor there Sunday morning. I sort of waited at the door for him to show up. And uh, I only had one question for him, but he couldn't answer that one straight out. So it took a few minutes. Uh, the question was, do you hold firmly to the doctrine of penal substitutionary atonement? I, it wasn't actually an ambush because I emailed him the previous Monday and didn't get a reply. And he said, well, yeah, I got your email. I didn't know how to reply. I've been looking up terms. You know, if a pastor has to look up terms like penal substitutionary atonement and the governmental theory of the atonement, which the Nazarenes hold, turns out, um... Uh, what do they teach at seminary? Yeah. You know, obviously the cross is not an important subject there. The atonement is not an important subject for Nazarenes. In fact, if you look at their website, the Church of the Nazarene website, just browse around there and see what you find on Christ and Him crucified. They'll mention evangelism, They'll mention making disciples, Christ-like disciples. According to their image of Christ, I'm sure, somebody that comes to serve us, to serve the world. And they mention uh, performing deeds of compassion and seeking to do justice. What does that sound like? A little bit woke? A little bit like old-fashioned liberalism in the church, because that's what it is. This isn't nothing new. Uh, that's where the mainline denominations went, including the Methodists. That's where the uh, Salvation Army is, long since departed from the gospel. That's where the Nazarenes are. They have forgotten, if they ever knew. See, the, the Nazarene denomination is not about Christ and him crucified. It's not about being the church of Jesus Christ. It's about promoting the Wesleyan, John Wesley's biblically false doctrine of entire sanctification. That's what it is about. That's why they came into existence like in 1907 in Chicago. They're only about as old as my house and just about as not square as my house. And the foundation is maybe worse than the foundation on my house, which is really poor. You know, like two layers of brick going down to the soil, that, that's my foundation on the house. There might be some pillars in there someplace. But it's terrible. It was, it was, I'm sure it was a house built by a coal miner for his family uh, over 100 years ago now. 
And the entire mortgage, I'm sure that included the, the material for the building, which was obviously not built by professionals, <clears throat> was was $500. And then it's been added on to poorly. <laughs> wow, did I discover some weird things. But I've seen worse. Anyway, the Church of the Nazarene is like that. It doesn't have a solid foundation. It's not built on Christ and Christ crucified. That is the gospel. That's what I told the pastor. That is the gospel. And if you're not preaching Christ and Christ crucified, you're not preaching the gospel. If you don't believe in the penal substitutionary atonement, you are still in your sins. You have no atonement. Because the governmental thing is a bunch of hooey. So, anyway, he told me that the uh, Grider's book is not the official uh, Nazarene theology. Grider, indeed, tried to get it accepted as the official theology, but he was uh, turned down on that. And uh, the official one, more or less, is uh, one written by a man named Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y, a uh, three-volume set called Christian Theology. It's available on Amazon, new for $103. I ordered one, but I didn't buy it new. <laughs> one thing about buying used, the author doesn't get any royalty. <laughs> it was published by Beacon, or is it Beacon Press? The, the, the defunct Nazarene publishing house. I think that went under about 1999. Uh, anyway, it's beside the point. But what I did find is I wasn't wrong. I, was, I had a terrible fear going there that I would find out what I already suspected, that Nazarenes do not really put any emphasis on the cross, on the atonement. It's not central. No, it's not. It's your personal righteousness that's central. And that's what I feared. Because uh, it's not the cross. Well, obviously, if Jesus didn't fully atone for your sin, then... You have to do something about your sin. You have to make yourself righteous. You, not knowing about the righteousness of God, the imputed righteousness of Christ, the free gift of righteousness that God has prepared for us. What do they do? They seek to establish their own righteousness, like sinless perfectionism. Well, guess what? You're not sinless. The Bible declares you're not sinless. And the person that thinks he's sinless has deceived himself and the truth is not in him. So says the Apostle John. So, actually, what I found was worse than I feared. It wasn't simply, no, we believe in the governmental theory, which is what he basically told me, uh, although they don't really care that much. If you want to believe something else, you can. In fact, he gave me the example that if you can be a Nazarene and believe in the pre-tribulational rapture, as if the timing of the rapture is even in the same category as the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ is magnitudes more important than the timing of the rapture. Your salvation does not depend on the timing of the rapture. It depends on what Christ did on the cross. That's how little they esteem the cross. It's not that important. That's why I have not been preaching or have not heard being preached Christ and Christ crucified. That's why communion seemed a little bit empty because that's all about Christ and Christ crucified. If you do not have a high view of the cross and the atonement, you cannot take communion seriously. You cannot do it in remembrance of what Christ did on the cross because you don't believe what Christ did on the cross, that he took the full penalty for your sins, which hung upon him as he hung on the tree, bearing the sins of the world, paying for it in full, taking our punishment upon himself, all of our punishment, so that having completed that, when he said, it is finished, our indictments 
for our crimes against God Almighty were stamped canceled, paid in full. It is not a pardon. It is a full payment. Christ satisfied the justice of God and the penalty of the law on that cross fully. Now, if you don't believe that, you don't have much of a salvation. And that's why the Nazarenes, I, I'm, now I'm not surprised that the Nazarene churches around here, the big ones at least, that I know for certain, uh, well, I suppose it was over a decade ago now, uh, went, to, went through the Rick Warren 40 Days of Purpose. I was shocked when I saw that on the Rick Warren's database back when, when I saw it. It might have been more than a decade ago. It might have been when I was still down in Texas. But now I understand why. The Nazarenes aren't really about Christ and Christ crucified. It's not. It's about your personal holiness. Just like the Pharisees. Not knowing about the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not subject themselves to the righteousness of God. They didn't think, see the need. Why should I need the cross? I'm, I'm sinlessly holy. Not quite that simple, but they have forgotten the gospel. Their gospel is something else. That is why they are going the woke direction. Social justice. Oh, they don't use the word social justice. They just say justice. Compassion. Works of compassion. See, it's about this is why when I heard the pastor saying Jesus came to serve us. Yeah, see, their, their view is that the church is supposed to be out in the world serving the world, serving sinners, and supporting the world. Not, not serving the Lord Jesus. See, he came to serve us. We're not supposed to serve him. He came to serve us. Obviously. See, that's why that struck me really weird. Like, wait a minute, Jesus didn't come to serve us. He came serving his Father. Because his Father sent him into the world to save sinners. So, the gospel really is not a big deal. See, that's just preparatory. It's just like Pentecostalism and the charismatic movement. The gospel is just getting born again, believing the gospel, being justified, being born again. That's just preparatory for the important thing, which is that second or perhaps third work of grace, depending on the denomination, where you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you either speak in other tongues or you are entirely sanctified and the sin that dwells in your flesh is eradicated. I cannot, under, I cannot believe how miserable those people must be because they know that they're living a lie. The Holy Spirit will convict them of their sin. What do you do? Once you've testified that you've been <sighs> sanctified entirely, and you get up and say, well, I was wrong because I've sinned. I wasn't really sanctified entirely. No, you live as a hypocrite. You do not confess your sin. Instead, you pretend that you're, you're entirely sanctified when you know you're not. And that either leads to depression or apostasy or just plain hypocrisy. Uh, just plain uh, well, they say apostasy, apostasy, depression, or hypocrisy. Those are the only three choices. Because it's not true. It's a false doctrine. It's always been a false doctrine. When you base a denomination on a falsehood, same thing about Pentecostalism is based on a falsehood. It never ends well. You wonder why people like... Uh, Kenneth Copeland can swindle millions 
because Pentecostalism is based on a false doctrine. It's a lie. It has a lie for its foundation. Not Christ as its foundation, not Christ as a cornerstone, a lie, a doctrine of demons. Because they are not speaking in other tongues, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a second work of grace, nor is entire sanctification. That only occurs at the return of Jesus Christ. That's what the verses they use to justify it say. 1 Thessalonians 3, um, 13 and 5, 23, something like that. So, well, you know what? It's not just the Nazarenes. The cross, the gospel, the cross, the blood of Christ has been largely forgotten in American Christianity. And Christianity around the world, at least as far as I know. I know in Mexico it's forgotten. See, a lot of these other countries, what they have is not evangelicalism at all, which there would be a possibility of, you know, but it is corrupt Pentecostalism. One is Pentecostalism, for example. They don't even have the right God. They don't have the God of the Bible. I have to say, uh, uh, Kenneth Grider, in his theology book, the, this one, his God is not the God of the Bible either. What he says about God is absolutely not true. That God is not by nature truth. That he's not by nature just and righteous. That he's not by nature love. That he's not by nature omnipresent. Who knows what else is in there? His God is not the God of the Bible. But yet, he was a professor at Nazarene Theological Seminary for 38 years wasn't ever kicked out. Well, at the end of his life, the kind of material he was seeking to publish, but was afraid to, was what Nazarenes are obviously headed to right now. As I've heard some of the preaching in one of the larger churches in the area here, um, they will be fully gay affirming before too much longer. They are already instructing their congregation to love people like homosexuals. Love them! Well, love is acceptance. Christ does not accept unrepentant homosexuals. He will accept repentant homosexuals. If you come to Christ to be saved from your sin, he will save you from your sin, deliver you from it. But if you're coming for some other reason, no. No, you're still in your sins. You have to come to God looking for salvation from sin. If you're looking for something else, you're not coming to him for an acceptable reason, an acceptable reason that God has stated, because he sent his son into the world to save sinners. If you don't want to be saved from your sin, he won't save you from your sin. He will leave you under the wrath of God because that's where you belong. That's where we all belong. Nazarenes want to please the world, just like Rick Warren. That's why the two had such an affinity. That's why they went through his 40 days of purpose a decade plus ago because basically they have the same agenda. Man. They are man-centered. I notice that in Grider. Grider is man-centered, not God-centered, not Christ-centered, man-centered. All man-centered. So, that's where the Nazarenes are, and most of the rest of Christianity in the United States, by the way. Christ and Christ crucified is not in the foreground. He has been put on the back burner or stuck in the refrigerator or freezer someplace. You know, just leftovers from 
Christmas past. America, America is under intense darkness right now. Satan, the prince of the power of the air, is ma openly ruling and reigning in the United States. In the government, in media, everywhere there's power. Because that's what he wants. That's what he's got. He rules over the he is the god of this age rules over the children of disobedience that ought to be plain today and while that's happening in the midst of this deep darkness the light of the gospel is a flickering candle most of the churches have rejected the gospel for something else for man to please the world. Well, so be it. The king is coming, and they're not ready. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and by not loving their lives even unto death. <laughs> 